Hey everybody, I hope you're all well out there. Uh, today I wanted to give you a tour of my studio. So let's go on in. So here we are in the studio. And the first thing I'm going to show you is my guitar, my acoustic guitar. This guitar is a first act uh, brand acoustic guitar bought at Target. I think it cost around $50. And uh, I don't really play a lot of acoustic guitar, but I'm, I'm sure I've used it on a few things. Let's just take a listen to how that sounds. So, you know, it doesn't sound too bad. Uh, I've had it for quite a while. So we'll come over here, there's a lamp, and hey, look at that, there's uh, Bernie Sanders, he's a cool guy, I like him a lot. Alright, so we're going to come over here, and the first thing I'm going to show you is, this is the um, PC, and you can see on the screen is the cover of my newest album, Virus Infect, uh, which can be downloaded from my Bandcamp page at thomaschrist.bandcamp.com uh, so if you haven't picked that up already be sure to do that um, you can download it for free from Bandcamp so anyway so this is a PC that I've used to create my music for probably the last seven or eight years and unfortunately it's seen better days it's starting to run pretty slow and I think it's time to as soon as I can I'm gonna replace it hopefully with a new um, iMac. Or, uh, so I'm not sure if I want to go with the iMac or if I'm going to go with the uh, uh, MacBook Pro. But either way, um, it's probably about time. But I still do use this. Uh, I use it for uh, internet, for emails. Uh, I also have backing tracks on there. So um, sometimes I need to get old you know, backing tracks for old songs and things like that. So that's what I'll still use this for. Uh, these are my headphones that uh, I use for pretty much everything. Um, and these are ATH. Let's see if we can get this in view here. These are um, Audio Technica ATH M30Xs. They're very good headphones. I recommend them if you're looking for headphones. So here we have my uh, MIDI keyboard set up. So we start at the bottom, we have the uh, Roland PK5A pedal board. We have the Behringer FCB1010 MIDI foot controller. Uh, then coming up we, from there we have the M-Audio Keystation 61ES. And then on the top, probably the most interesting one is the Casio CTK 601 and this may look like you know some kind of a cheaper toy keyboard and it wasn't very expensive uh, I think back in the day these sold for $150, $200 something like that so you know in the grand scheme of things it didn't cost that much but um, let me tell you this is capable of a lot um, one of the most interesting features of it is that it has a synthesizer so you can see there you have a uh, choice of different amp envelopes and pitch envelopes that you can apply to various voices on here. Um, and then you have about 40 preset slots that you can save those to. So let's just take a listen. This thing, you know, I use it mainly as a MIDI controller, but it does, it does still function. So we'll just listen to some of these sounds. Uh, this one's cool. There are a couple other ones. Yeah, that's that's wild. You know, this is a Casio keyboard.
pretty cool. I mean, you could do worse than that. So if you do see one of these at a flea market or anything, and this also has, you know, like preset drum beats. This is one I've used on a number of songs. And for each one, you have a fill-in. And you also have a variation. Another one I like is 37 Pop Rock. That one has a cool fill on it. I like that. Um, so then we have, moving up, we have these uh, JBL Studio Monitors, which uh, I'm sorry to say that I don't use these very often because I mix on the headphones that I showed you earlier. Coming up from there, we have the M-Audio Fast Track Pro. And this I use mainly as a MIDI interface. So two of the, the keyboards that I showed you are hooked up to the my old computer with uh, through here and then the other one is hooked up through a Yamaha MIDI to USB interface so um, I don't really use this as an audio interface anymore because there's a problem with the output where one channel is is louder than the other one so um, so I don't really use it much as an audio interface because of that so we'll come over here um, next we have this is my main guitar that I use. This is a Jackson. Um, I don't even know what this really is in particular. Uh, it has dual humbuckers. It's a nice guitar. Uh, it works for what I need it for. So now coming over here, we have my Yamaha P115 digital piano. And this is a great you know, relatively less expensive digital piano if you need to have, you know, full 88 notes with weighted keys. This is the one I'd probably recommend. Coming up from there, we have the audio interface. And this is Zoom U24. Uh, it has two channel input, both XLR and line. It has four channel output headphones. It's a good audio interface. I'd recommend it. Uh, this is the microphone that I use. Let's move the pop filter out of the way. This is the MXL 990. This is a good... I think I got this one, and it was paired with a bullet condenser mic. And I think they were both around like $99.99, $100. So not a bad deal. Um, now we have the MacBook Pro. And this is kind of my main recording machine right now. I've used Logic Pro on this. And you can see there's my uh, there's my YouTube channel. You see the number of subscribers here is 21. We need to get that higher. I'd like to see that be closer to 40 by the end of the year at least. Uh, and also, let's try to get some more comments. If you have comments, if you have questions, throw them down in the comments so that I know that you're watching and are engaged that would be cool but anyway uh, so that's that and then connected to that is the iPad so this is uh, you know there's a lot of cool apps that I use you can see some of them there but there's a I have a lot on there um, so I can use that GarageBand and Aurea Pro and I also use LumaFusion on there to edit videos so that's cool uh, now we'll go over to some stuff over here now, this looks really amazing. This is the Studio Live uh, AR16 USB by Presonus. Uh, problem with this, this was really cool and I used it for a year until one day I turned it on and it doesn't work. So these buttons used to light up and everything, nothing lights up. Um, you still do get sound through the analog channels the last time that I used it but I, I I don't even chance using it anymore because it's something's really wrong with it so I need to get this sent in and get this repaired um, which is probably going to be a major ordeal uh, to try to get it back into the original box and ship it out to who knows where and you know contact them and you know I'm not looking forward to it but I need to do it because I having this would be a game changer if this was working again uh, so down here now this is really interesting. This is the Boss 
BR8 digital recording studio. I got this, I want to say in maybe two, that late 2000. Um, this was the machine that I recorded the Christ World album on. It was also used for Blast Famous 2005. Um, I still play around with it now. It has some cool effects on it. Uh, I even bought zip disks recently and just tried to create on there just to give myself some like limitations and, and see if I can be more creative recording on here. And I, I do like the sound of the recordings this produces, but um, so I still like to play around with this. It still works. It's pretty cool. All right, so let's come over here. We have a bunch of keyboards. There's one other MIDI controller that's not working properly. I have a, a, a Casio SK-1. It's seen better days probably, but it still works, I think. Um, and hiding back here in the corner, you have my uh, PV Forenza guitar, which used to be my favorite guitar. Right now, it needs some work on it. Um, there's a lot of static on the output uh, and, and, you know, with the volume knobs and things. And I just need to take it to some kind of a guitar expert to get that fixed. So I can't wait to hopefully use that again. Now, right here, this is one of my pride and joys of my whole collection here. This is the Yamaha DJX. And I can't say enough good things about this keyboard. This was used on... Uh, a lot of my recordings, but I know it was used on Final Repose heavily, was used on Christ World heavily, uh, and, and various other things from, from there on. But this is a keyboard that they produced. It was a prosumer keyboard. Uh, I think it came out in like 1998. I, I bought it in 2000, I think. But anyway, these weren't even very expensive. These were maybe 200 250 dollars um but they're keyboards that are specifically designed to do electronica dance music rap music um and and kind of the things that were popular around the, the turn of the century from their you know the very early 2000s so uh late 90s very early 2000s so it has a filter section it has a ribbon controller really 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 cool keyboard i can't recommend this enough it also has a sampler can't recommend this enough if you have a chance to pick one of these up these are fantastic get the original one there was a djx2 which is what i heard it's not as good as this one so if you get the djx1 that's the one you want the blue one the other one is like black and gray anyway let's come over here now this is cool this is the korg micro korg and this is just a, a great little synthesizer. Um, if, if you really don't want to spend the money on a more expensive synthesizer, of course some of these can, some synthesizers can run into several thousands of dollars, uh, pick this up. Uh, this, I think these sell for around $300, $350. I think there's a newer version of this out now, but I mean this has, you know, it's got an arpeggiator on it, it's got a full filter bank, it has lots of different sounds that you can edit and, and save. Um, has lots of great built-in sounds, has a vocoder. So yeah, I can't, rem can't recommend this highly enough. This is just a fantastic, fantastic little, the only, the only drawback to it is the tiny keys. But other than that, it's a great uh, synthesizer. Now, here we have, this is my guitar effects processor, the ME70 which I used a lot on the Vengeance Cycle from 2013. And this is really cool. Uh, the only problem that I have with this is that it'll do the basic guitar tones that you would want. It has an amp model on it. It has emulations of lots of different boss guitar pedals and even a dedicated delay section. And it has this you know, a uh, pedal that can be used as volume pedal or a pitch shifter. But if you really want like far out wild kind of guitar effects, this one, it's going to be tough to get those out of it. I'm sure you can to some degree, but, um, you know, for what I like to do, I really like to stretch the boundaries of guitar effects. And this, 
The only thing I dis the only thing I didn't like about it was that it doesn't really do that as much as I would like. But I mean, it's still very good. And the other problem with it is it's it's purely analog. There's no digital output. It would be nice to have a USB output. There is a model that does that, but it's a little bit more expensive. So if we come over here, and we have the um, this is my bass guitar. Uh, re reason for the stickers on it is I bought it off of an ex-girlfriend a long time ago. Um, but this is a good little bass. Um, to be honest with you, I, I don't use it as much as I should, but um, yeah, I need to play around with this a little bit more. Uh, so this is a cool bass guitar. Harmony. I don't know. Let's get out of here. And we'll come back. A couple other things I wanted to show you. Um, here we have, this is the PV Rage 158 amplifier. Um, it's a nice little guitar amp, just a little practice amp. It's the only amplifier I really have. And then, if you look at this, this is really cool. This right here is a, what you would do with this is you would put the original iPad in here. And it only fits the original iPad, so it really is, is not very useful right now. You would put the original iPad in here, and it was like this MIDI guitar. And these are all buttons. And there was an app that went with it. And it even has a speaker built into it. And you were able to play guitar with the iPad. Uh, it's just, I wish that it would still be compatible with modern iPads, but unfortunately it isn't. So, so there's that. So I think that about covers everything in the studio. We'll come back over here to the Virus Infect logo. So again, um, you know, you can check out my music on uh, at thomaschrist.bandcamp.com. And uh, of course, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're not already. Uh, please do so because I'm going to be releasing a lot of content uh, as days go by here. Um, and don't forget to like and hit the bell icon and all that stuff. And uh, just thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a great day. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.